not heard any. Okay. Um, are we ready in the control room? <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> so it is 9.02, and I am going to call the uh, January 2022 meeting of the Tremplow County Environment and Land Use Committee to order at this time. Uh, we have a um, slightly smaller house, but we'll go the roll call anyway. George Brandt, I'm the chairman, and represent District 6 on the county board. Uh, Kellen Nelson, vice chair, and represent uh, District 14. Tony Munson, representing Towns Association. Kurt Bryan, county supervisor, representing District 16. Randy Severson, livestock producer member on the committee. And staff. Chuck Zoner, county conservationist. Mike Corman, director of land management. Thank you. I'll certify the open meeting law requirements have been met by posting wherever they need to be posted. We have a 14 item agenda. What is the wish of the committee? Move to approve. Motion second. by Nelson, second by Munson to approve the agenda. Any comments? All right, all in favor of approving the agenda as printed say aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved. The minutes, uh, we have had them virtually, I think, um, and we may, well, actually, um, uh, for some time. Oh, Chuck Here's has Chuck. made it. Excellent. Yeah. Chuck Wallach is here. Please note that. Um, <coughs> who's taking minutes, by the way? Verge is taking minutes remotely Ooh. today. Interesting. Okay. Chuck has arrived at 904. Um, uh, where are we with the minutes? So I'm, I'm entertaining a motion to uh, approve the minutes. So move. I was just going to say, <laughs> we're, waiting for, we're waiting on you, Chuck. Is there a second by Skoyan? Um, any corrections or additions? <coughs> if not, all in favor of approving the minutes from the December meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? None? Okay, the minutes are approved. Um, it looks like a short agenda. Um, our director has assured me that it may not be because we've got some pretty heavy items to deal with and the first one is mining conditional use permit updates and I think is Chuck taking that one yes Chuck yes um, through the uh, review of the mines we have found some <coughs> that um, the conditional use was not completely up to date and we're working through the details of that right now about some if you're inactive for more than a year, then your conditional use expires, but there's, we've been finding some that have been active. There's also been some that are, um, they need a two-year review, and it's been hard to find those, um, where those were, but we've been finding some of those. So we sent out uh, seven of these conditional use things that we need to update the records and some of them we might have to go all the way through the public hearing again, but that's at this point. We're also, I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but th all the mines over an acre have been approved, and if there's issues, there's been letters sent, and every mine has been um, sent a um, form about them renewing their permit and their fees that are needed. So. Can you, can you give us a number, Chuck? of how many yes uh, approximately 50 mines altogether 50 yes wow that's a little shale yep. that's everything yep so there is pretty much an even split 25 25 okay um that's it, not exact numbers I, yeah, but it's pretty close d do you want to talk any about uh and you had mentioned this, um, the two-year review um, as part of the conditions. Were those on predominantly the industrial mines? Yes. Okay. All, of them have been, all these that for the conditional use has been for the industrial sand mines. Okay. 
and some were like I said that these it uh, the condition was that they get renewed at five year eight year or whatever but if they just came in and said okay we're going to renew it for another two years their permit did not lapse but I think we've been finding some that they they did not go through that process and so then the conditional use starts all over again but right now we're the letters have been sent and we're reading through the process of them you know where they're at with the activity and if they have proof that they were reviewed in a two-year fashion okay thank you any questions all right um, well since you have your mic on uh, next item on the agenda is county conservationist operations report um, we got the official notice from the land and water board that we re we passed the five-year review mm -hmm. Woohoo! Um, we also um, went through all the SAG cost sharing funds, so we pretty much zeroed that out. Um, the bonds have already been done, but that was done through the process, and I spoke about this in other meetings that some of it was diverted to Green Lake County for them to use their money to the fullest extent, and that means that we will not get penalized for any of our SAG funds bond or otherwise for next year uh, applying the poster contest the poster contest is due today so if you want to hand in a poster please do it the speaking contest is january 11th so but you would need to have your forms in before this time but january 11th in the sp speaking forms or um, for the speaking contest also we have the tree orders out now and i think some of you got those but they're also on our website so if you want to order trees we are working with um, western at this time for the nutrient management planning and i've been getting some um, leftovers or because brad has not been able to make those but i've been going through well just very few at this point but two people trying to update their nutrient management plans. But that's going to be every Monday at 1230 until 3. So if you want to get your um, nutrient management plans updated, please do that. There's cost sharing for how many you know, um, per acre you do it. There's cost sharing for soil samples, and there's cost sharing for the actual class. So this is every Monday at Western, you said, in yes. Independence, right? Right. Okay, and who are you working with again, Brad? Brad Serenati. Okay. So, and be in touch with you about signing up for that or getting getting more information. Right, and if you can't make theirs or whatever, I'm fairly new at the Snap Plus. I've worked through two plans, so if you come in, please be patient with me. But I, two people have come in so far, and. Between us, we've been able to figure it out in trying to get these nutrient management plans done. Right. Well, we are moving right along here. Is there any other questions for Chuck? Yes, um, Randy. Comment, uh, the stuff, the Department of Land Management Facebook posts, and, and, and I find those really good. So if, if you were Haley or... You spot. would have to give credit to Haley yeah. for that, so... Yeah, I like they're really colorful, informative. Okay. I'm sure she'll appreciate to hear that. Thank you. Not seeing anything else. We're going to move to um, the cost share payment request. I saw you in the hallway. Hi, Becky. Do we have something on, say, on the back of the agenda? Yep, on the Holy back of the agenda. Holy cow. Well, go ahead. All right. So, Wait a um, minute. That's a familiar looking name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um, so, as Chuck said, yeah, we kind of spent through the SEG mm -hmm. funds, which is good because we were kind of getting worried about that. Um, the first few are cover crops, which is new for us this year. We haven't ever done new SEG funds for cover crops, and it seems to really be a popular thing. Chuck's been working hard on it. Um, looks like we got James Gladowski. Um, he's getting $1,000 over by Arcadia. 
John and Donna Bortle, um, 1,250 over by Albion. Um, Tony and Tamara, <laughs> Tammy Munson are getting $8,665 over by Unity. Um, Tina Rothring is 3125 over by Gail. And then um, the last one is not a SEG, it is a bond, but it's a still the same grant. It is Russell Butman's. It's um, part of the Stream Bank Protection Plan that we were doing with his property for 7000 over by Ettrick. And that's the land and water grant. The next one is the county cost share grants. Um, this is the one that the department uses. It's our own personal um, grant fund. We've got Bill Guza with $2,066.25 for that access road over by Arcadia. Um, Leif, and I'm terrible with last names like Tolican. this. Tolican. Tolican. Um, it is $3,940.50, so that grade stabilization over by Ettrick. Um, Russell Buttonman, it's the same project. It was just split between two grants. Mm -hmm. $9,858.70, that's the Stream Bank Protection by Ettrick. And then Eric Husebo, this is a partial payment. We still have um, some of the stuff left to do for this next coming year. Um, $21,025.87, um, more or less the grade stabilization, uh, and that's over by Ettrick. The next one is a newer one for us. This is the multi-discharge mm -hmm. variance. So the first one we're paying out with be um, Daryl Churstead, which is $14,699.12, and that's the stream bank protection and the trails and walkways over by Ettrick. And then another new one is notice of discharge, NOD. Brian Olson, this is again a partial payment. Um, we are only paying for stuff that's been completed so far. Um, there you see a whole list of criteria, reason for cha charge or change on the side. This part of it is specifically for the um, feed storage area. And it's $1,994,305.73. Oh. <laughs> yes. This is that really big grant almost. that's like almost 800000 It's like between seven hundred and 800000 Is that the one that came before? Yes. Yeah, okay. We had a specific resolution on yeah. this grant. I mean, the... Uh, the landowner we had he had gotten a discharge notice and we had this is that yeah project. this should be that same project this has been in the works for the last couple years um, it's kind of finally starting to make headway this past year so tell me where these pots of remind us where these pots of money are or sure. come from rather okay so the notice of discharge that is DNR um, it is very similar to our trim grants um, it's just that there's no cap on this one, and the DNR is the one who is initiating this. Um, multi and, and funding it. And funding it, yeah. It's all it's reimbursement. Um, Multi-discharger variance. That one is the one where we get the money from the towns that are all associated with the hucks who are causing the um, phosphorus to go into the waterways. The well, county yeah, we, cost. We, we get that from the cities and villages with the. Who are in those hucks that it is right. being affected. Okay. Yep. Then it's got the county cost share. That is our money here at the county. That is the one we approve. It's 80000 and we use it for um, low-cost, high-impact projects in the county. And then the last one is land and water resource management, also known, known as soil and water resource management. That one is DAT cap. So that one is, again, state funds, and it's reimbursement grant. I, I want to get a sense of the room. Do you want Do you want to... Um, approve them all at once or take them uh, as a piece all at once all at once okay i'd entertain a motion make then. that a motion by scoyan all of the different management plans here is there a second i'll oh, second it's by severson any other discussion all in favor of approving these uh outlays say aye aye, aye. 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 opposed same sign write the checks <laughs> thanks becky Thank over. Um, now, the director operations report. Uh, a, couple, a couple of things. Um, if you haven't noticed, uh, the logos have been put on the vehicles. I think some of you have seen that. I think it, they turned out very well. Um, so that's going on. Um, we have uh, two positions in the department are, that are being uh, recruited right now, the economic development position and the conservation specialist position. Uh, those positions close on Monday. So this is the, the five days prior to closing is when the applications start coming in. 
Um, we do have some already in. Um, so we're looking forward to those. Um, one thing I, I think we maybe talked about a little bit last time, but we continue to get very positive comments on the department newsletter that went out. And we've gotten a, a lot of uh, tree and shrub, shrub orders mm -hmm. and people wanting to get information on that. Um, and people notice I heard about this from the newsletter. I've been getting trees and shrubs from other counties. I'm glad I got this newsletter. So um, we continue just to get a lot of comments on that. Uh, and thanks again for the comments on the Facebook page. We're, one of the things we're really trying to do is uh, improve our outreach and communicate to the public on what we have to offer. Uh, and part of that is both hard copy and online presence. And Haley's really taken a leadership role on in stepping that up and she's doing a fantastic job. Um, and uh, we've just been working on end of the year stuff, reporting with the state and stuff like that. So we're wrapping that up in January as well. That's all I have. Um, okay, that's, well, forget about what I said earlier, how this is going to be a long meeting. Um, we, we do have a handout here related to adjusted work policy uh, um, and work schedule policy. This is a discussion we started sometime last year, um, and then it just sort of fell off. The radar when other issues came up. Do you want to describe <coughs> the history and, and where we're at here? Well, you probably know more history than I do, but um, I will say that yeah, the, w to the extent that I know, I think there was some kind of policy in the past. I couldn't find uh, actual documents what the specific policy was. Um, and so, anyways, what I did is um, I adapted the human services policy on a, a adjusted work schedules. Uh, for the Department of uh, Land Management. Um, so this is very, very similar to, to their policy. And the idea behind this is to be able, you know, a lot of our work is outside regular office hours with farmers, businesses, and things like that. So um, it's important to have uh, flexible work schedules. Um, it also helps us reduce our comp time, those kinds of things. And then it's also really important as far as recruiting and re retaining employees. Um, flexible work schedules in that uh, realm is really, really important today. And so this outline today, essentially, we have, you know, a bill, uh, the main driving thing in all this is we will, we will uh, as a manager, I will ensure that we have employees here to cover the office during the regular building hours. So essentially, I, I look at that as the egg side of the office and the non-egg side. So uh, we will have people here scheduled uh, uh, regardless of, of what the um, schedules are. So we'll take that into account. Uh, essentially, it's uh, either a four nine-hour days in a week and one four-hour day, four tens, and then other adjusted work schedules on a case-by-case -case basis. So essentially, uh, and we've I've spoke with every employee in the department um, they like the policy uh, and they also get that that uh, we have to have office coverage everyone understands that and really gets that part of being part of a team in an office to work together and that also means working out on the schedule stuff so um, we're pretty positive on the employee side on this um, while you were talking I was reading um if you've had an opportunity to read through it. Um, I think you pretty much hit the highlights in terms of the, the options that are defined as flexible, um, the nines and the four, or the four tens. And I think the important piece being that um, it, it will be monitored and approved by you and with yes. the possibility of um, uh, pulling back from it when needed. Right, yeah, if, if an employee is not fulfilling their responsibilities, uh, then I have the ability at any time essentially put them back on a 830 to or 8 o'clock to uh, 430 schedule so um, It just Wanted to bring this for, forward for your approval and and just let you know that hey I'm gonna be an active engaged manager in this and uh, one of the things I also talked to staff to is we all need to be um, with responsibility comes uh, accountability and uh, that kind of thing and um, I, everyone 
gets that in the office. Mike, do you have any policy for working from home? Just the current um, county policy, which is on the books, okay. it's remote books. We have that option. Um, we'll prob probably be looking into that some more um, going forward, but wanted to just start out with this piece this, here. Okay. Um, in order for this to go into effect, we need to approve it. Uh, well, do you feel comfortable uh, approving it today? I'll make a motion to approve the okay. work policy. Mr. Wallach, to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Munson. Um, I would say that if there were any issues related to this that the employees um, um, felt uh, mm -hmm. that we would have more employees in the room, I, I suspect that um, your conversations have been fruitful and that folks, Chuck, would you say um, employees are on the same page? Yes, um, Mike asked me about it and now I've been starting at 7 and getting done at 3.30, but then we have Haley that comes in as, at 8 to 4.30. So, you know, he's doing quite a thorough job in making sure everybody's covered. I also told everybody in the, um, the, the land conservation department about it is that I'll cover for anyone. So, you know, if someone doesn't have anything else, I'll cover for them. So it's been working out really well so far. Yeah, we, we essentially kind of for the last 30 days been trying it out as a pilot basis, mm -hmm. uh, work out and see if there are any glitches, glitches right. that kind of thing that would come up, and it's worked out pretty well. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the um, Department of Land Management uh, adjusted work schedule policy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, it is approved. Um, this is a issue that uh, the next item on the agenda solar farm trends and regulations randy brought this up in passing many months ago i've had a uh, couple of phone calls about this since then uh, it's certainly on the radar at the town's level um so uh i've asked um this guy here mike to look into this and uh tell us what you found all right, um, the short story on this um, is the trend we've seen in land use over the last 10 years is less local control. And that comes into play very much when it comes to solar farms. Um, currently, we have two solar farms in the county, Riverland Energy, that's about seven acres. And then in the city of Arcadia, there's one about 36 acres. Um, the big key in this is a state statute that limits what political or, or municipalities and counties can do to regulate wind and solar energies um, so that we can't implement a one-size-fits-all um, system. Everything's got to be a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, and then also there's a essentially um, these get broken out on size 100 megawatts and up and then also below and then if it's a by a regulated uh, utility um, so there is a dual permit application to the DNR and the Public Service Commission the um, filing requirements is a 58 page document right here this is all the information that they have provided. Everything from local zoning, land use, farmland preservation, alternative sites, technical descriptions, construction sequence, workforce, site geology. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. And the short of it is for these 100 megawatt sites and over, it goes to the PSC for a certif certificate of public convenience and necessity. <coughs> and, you know, and it essentially, all this information gets taken into effect. So they'll look at local comprehensive plans, zoning ordinances, zoning on the property, <coughs> zoning within two miles of the proposed site, stuff like that. There is very general, there's no, the, the requirements at the PSC are very vague so they take in all this information and then it's just they make a decision but there isn't 
from what I can tell, very hard and fast rules on how they make their, their decisions. When they, as part of the process goes through, um, when a filing comes in, there's um, within 10 days of receiving an application, the PSC will notify um, municipalities, towns, and libraries within 10 days of an application coming in. Notice, it says municipalities, towns, and libraries. It does not say, it. one thing to keep in mind here in state statutes, the word municipalities has some kind of different definitions. Most, a lot of the times, it does, municipalities does not include county government. So uh, if one of these were going to come in, 100 megawatts or more application come in to the Public Service Commission, it would be the town or city or village that would get notified and not the county. So then they, the PA, uh, Public Service Commission goes through their process to make sure the application is complete. They do that within 30 days. Once they determine it's a complete application, they have 10 days to notify the municipality um, the town and the libraries again to go through and then there's uh, I think 100 uh, they have to take final action within 180 days and they can extend the review period for 180 days for good cause in general the whole process is 12 to 18 months and not very much local input overall there is a, a reference here to a, a hearing and rounds of testimony from applicants and technical staff. Does that, um, uh, are the municipalities invited to the hearing? Or are they requested, is their input requested? Or are they just being notified? I believe they're being notified. Um, uh, again, this is very public service commission driven. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not fully clear on on how they're going to run their that, that part of their public hearings, but but there's when you look across the state uh, where these projects are happening, there's uh, tends to be very little local local input input into these projects. It's very informative, right up. I, I do need to do a little bit more research on the on the um, projects below 100 megawatts. If we look into our zoning code right now, we allow utilities greater than a thousand square feet in many of our zoning districts via conditional use permits. So even all ag zones, rural residential, residential A, residential 20, commercial and industrial, um, we allow utilities. Uh, via conditional use permit so but that's one of the things more research I need to do on is that under 100 megawatts um, section and I think that's uh, what we tend to see are these solar farms are shooting for 100 megawatts um, the conditional use permits around utilities generally are um, oh, what are they called um, stations some stations are transmission lines transmission I mean that's the lines. corridor that they're looking for I yeah. assume one of, one of the the, <clears throat> the key things in here what drives where things go is the connection to transmission systems cost so if, it's a, if there's a high cost there um, that's going to impact um, or if there's a lower cost to that transmission system there's going to be more likelihood of location closer to those I think some of these solar farms are looking at storage on site there, but they still need to be connected to the grid somehow. So connecting to transmission lines is going to be key in all of these. Yeah, and on that, when I sat through and listened to a couple of presentations, they did talk about that there might be necessary to include landowners just for that transmission to the power source. And you kind of asked about, you know, how is that going to work? and uh, I don't think they really, I mean, I don't remember them, you know, giving much of an answer, but that's going to take cooperation from people that, and there's must be some revenue, you know, easement revenue or something for them. I know another complaint, I don't know if it's in Europe or whatever, 
the lithium batteries. Where do you put the waste from all this after a period of time? It can't be buried, from my understanding. Yeah, the, uh, the lifespan that I've read, it's 30 to 50 years on these solar panels, and um, some of those parts of those solar panels can be recycled, but as you said, other parts cannot right now. So um, that is an issue, a long-term uh, issue with the solar panel, solar farm. Uh, this is anecdotal um, in response to Randy's uh, comment. The um, Organic Valley has uh, invested in a number of wind turbines, which they then they then need to get the power from their wind turbines to the the power um, power substations and so forth. And um, they do not do as good a job as our rural electric cooperatives in lining up their towers. They sort of go zigzag. And that may just be because they can't get people to uh, to allow on the um, an easement, but that yeah, that they have to get the power to someplace. I know Old Clark County's got um, they got a public hearing either in February or March on the wind turbines that are supposed to be going in um, Clear Creek proposed. So I don't know if you could get some information there, also. We, we've been through the process. You, you probably recall the, um, uh, when there was a possibility of a, a, a wind turbine farm near Ettrick. Um, we, we had uh, lots of hearings, lots of information, um, and it ended up much as Mike started his presentation with um, local governments getting less and less control of uh, what we can require of people. So. Were you on that committee? I, I was not on that. I, I was on this committee at that time, and I heard the I, results I of the, the committee the, for the county. Pardon? Yeah, you were on that committee. Right. But they had the hearing. I know there was, I think, seven. <coughs> they wanted seven for seven against it, and seven neutral was what they wanted. But I went. I think I went to all of them. I was on seven four. Mm -hmm. Because I was on the RA board at the time. Oh right. They needed. They needed renewable energy and that was one of the reasons for Riverland backing backing it yeah more or less green power because of government regulations to have so much so many percent mm -hmm. renewable energy yeah so thank you this is this is a quite quite the deep dive here and if when you get more clarification on the uh, under 100 megawatts we are yes Randy I before we wrap this up, there is it's something that could be quite a driver for municipalities and this company anyway, and I'll just read part of their, their spiel here. It says, this unique revenue sharing model replaces locally collected property, property taxes on land within the project with state tax on utility scale solar generation. The state then in turn provides utility aid to towns and counties at a substantially greater rate than the existing taxes and they give a, an example of the Badger Hollow project and they say that will input uh, a million two per year which is more than 12 times the amount the county and towns are currently receiving from the real estate taxes for the project area so that's a considerable driver I could think for municipalities and based based on what I think I know if I can parse that out that what they're talking about then is the lower tax they use value assessment on agricultural land is significantly less than yep. uh, uh, assessed valuation. And that's another question too. And, like, I don't and then know. and then it, it's possible that they're they're interpreting some of our statute uh, the state statutes that require um, utilities uh, to much like the the power lines that come through our county to to the, the state requires them to um, um, pay a certain amount to the municipalities per, per yeah, year one for, for, or in the case of the county, one time, one time yeah. for um, basically messing up the landscape. Yeah. And um, so wh whether there's, I'm, I'm not sure that they're being clear and, I, and I'm not exactly clear if it, re um, the, that uh, necessity of transmission lines, which is what was our source of income mm -hmm. here, uh, applies to um, to these 
the, the entire solar farm or just to the right. transmission part of it? I couldn't tell you that either. Yeah. So one question I, I would have, um, it seems to me that we're, what I'm hearing, and I want to make sure I'm understanding this right, is that we're going to have very little, if any, say whether we want this project to go or not. And while that's troubling, uh, another another thing that, you know, a concern I have is like, okay, so say if you own this parcel or maybe Tony owns this parcel, he signs his up. I'm right next to him. I don't want to. But to connect to this line, are they going to have eminent domain that they take what they want? That wasn't clear when... And that's the type of question I want to understand. Yeah. I think that... in. In my mind, anyone who does sign up should want to understand that as well, because it's one thing to be for something and, and and sign up to participate in the project, but when you start affecting all your neighbors, it gets a little bit more, it'd be a tougher pill to swallow, I'll just say. Good point, good point. We'll look into that. Yeah. Well, is this all kind of being driven by charging stations or whatever, closer to cities where people are trying to go with electric cars, it's not affecting? Here so much per se, but California or what? I mean, is it is that why they're getting more green energy to support more it demand? Is, it is linked it's, to that. It's, it's the it's entire national grid. Uh, energy, energy grid policy of trying to to reduce emissions. And I think these companies can reap some pretty good benefits from providing the green power to the uh, conventional uh, grid. In for energy. And it looks like they're is that is that out of um, Brownsville? Um, what, uh, Texas, you mean? Or? Oh, it's Texas. Well, it's it. It's they list some projects all over the country. So oh. Georgia, something in Las Vegas. So I don't really know. I never looked up to see okay. you know the company itself. They have some pretty flashy advertising <laughs> and promotional. Um, your, your point. Your point is well, well made, and I, I think part of the. Um, and this comes down a little little bit further down in the, the handout where they talk about um, smaller utility scale projects submitted by regulated public utilities. Eminent domain can be um, brought about by um, a utility, mm -hmm. REA for instance. Mm -hmm. If this is a private company, not so much, unless the um, the legislature decides it can. It could be like all schmoozed right into um, because they're providing to a power company. I wouldn't be surprised if that would be umbrella in. You know, one thing I read a little bit. A lot of times, what what sometimes energy companies are do working on these projects. Other times, it's a developer that mm -hmm. gets permitted. Uh, gets it all built out and then they sell it to a utility company. Mm -hmm. So potentially they could, uh, I don't know if they would do this, but maybe they develop it to the point where they, the only thing that's needed is the connection and then they hand it off mm -hmm. and the utility company does the eminent domain and stuff to mm -hmm. do the connection. To get the rest of it done. To get, to get the yeah, rest and the of thing done. with the process of eminent mm -hmm. domain, work continues, mm -hmm. and not, you know, like they already have everything in place and then you can you can you know try to appeal or but n no work never stops mm -hmm. at least that's what we were told when the capex line came through our land so object all you want but here it comes here it comes yeah thank you mike um sure. land use planning just becomes more and more interesting mm -hmm. I think I think one take home a little bit, you know, with the the I haven't been I don't know anyone has been on the inside of a review of a public service commission uh, process on this, but you know all the information there's a lot of information that goes into the these things, um, and it's I think one thing that is a take home message um, is having a land, a land use plan and having zoning. I think does play a role, some role at least. Mm -hmm. um, to what extent, I'm not sure, but uh, I think it is still important to have those tools in place. Well, right. that would be the point, is if the municipality doesn't have the control, who does? The DNR, the federal? Public, Service, yeah, Pub pub yeah, public, yeah, public Service, Service Commission. Mission. In this case, yeah. and, and, and if you don't have a plan, that makes it harder <laughs> for the PSC to say no or say, 
well, better off to choose that alternative project site versus your primary site, things like that. So um, I, I just think it's beneficial to at least have those plans in place. Who initiates the item in the first place? Is it the landowner or is it somebody who approaches them? Or the developer. The yeah. developer. Whoever's would, developing that. Would run the studies on? They submit the application. I would be remiss if I don't if I don't mention this the the calls I had gotten from uh, town board members raised the issue of how important is agricultural land to people in Trempolo County. Um, I mean that that's uh, the rhetorical question um, because these the the project that's um, being proposed in Cal town of Caledonia um, it sits on good excellent farmland as a matter of fact and so. To, to what value do we as a as a county but we as a society value ag land and the, what it produces what is that project I'm, I'm, I guess I'm green on that project. well Randy's got the information oh. there there's at, oh, at, at this point it's um, I was told it was up to 1300 acres had been signed on to potentially be leased it's for it uh, 18 recently. 18? Uh, yeah, that much more? Okay. okay. Push, I, I didn't getting know close to critical. That's where you yeah. yeah, they yeah. actually you know, came to my okay. my door and gave me the pitch. And, All right. And then I've sat yeah. in on a few. 1,300 acres? Uh, yeah, or that. More. I've heard I, more. Yeah. So I don't know. Must be a lot of sunshine down there. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see that? <laughs> no, nice. We well, can get, hand that up to Mike. Oh, okay. Do you want to give that to Mike? Yeah, then? Mike can. Okay. Do you Thank need you. this back? Then? Yeah. All right. Just in case I might want. So let's <laughs> let's move on. We'll we'll be we'll be kept uh, updated on this and. Um, uh, well, you know, there is something we could do is we could instruct our director to be in touch with a representative from the Public Service Commission to come and talk to us about about the process. And the card and contact information for that company is in that folder. Right. And it's it would be possible also, uh, and I'm sure they would be happy to come and talk to us yeah. as well. Yeah. That so if you it, let's start with the PSC you know, I didn't to let us know where we, interest uh, didn't go to the what they're meeting, thinking so if they I have someone they, they send out they to the okay. <laughs> on board meeting. No, they have group meetings. They've had one at El Maro. They've had a few other ones. A lot of lubrication at El Maro <laughs> that, that would really facilitate the conversation. Um, there's a nice pitch for the local winery, too. Uh, um, well, uh, future agenda items. Um, this this is tossed out to us on the committee. Anything? This, uh, this is a great example of a future agenda item that, that we need to be looking at. Two more meetings, and then yep. we got to say, Eddie um, just let Mike know, um, or Chuck, and uh, we'll get we'll get it going. Um, this may have been a, a good time for the uh, um, during the director's report, but um, I can't remember. You probably even have told me um, has our um, outdoor recreation uh, plan been approved or sent in or. Yes, at the county board meeting in December, the county uh, or the oh, that's right, the that's right. Outdoor Rec plan was approved. Thank you for reminding me. So, uh, um, and then also uh, just other PTED things. Uh, uh, PTED yesterday mm -hmm. approved uh, pursuing a master plan for Petrick Park. Mm -hmm. So we have a planning process to outline uh, the future vision for Petrick Park, and it's very timely. We have the 50th anniversary of Petrick Park here in 2022 that we'll be celebrating in September. And so with that comes along a planning process and a visioning process of what we're going to, as a, as a county, pursue as uh, the vision for Petrick Park. And so we'll have a master, nice uh, looking concept plan for the park uh, that we can celebrate and, and pursue for the next 50 years. Okay, thank you. Um, the next meeting date is February 2nd, Groundhog's Day, halfway to spring. Um, I don't know, you know, just hang around till 10 o'clock or <laughs> <laughs> otherwise I, I could adjourn the meeting at this time. Let's do it, 9.45. Thank you everybody for coming. 45 minutes. <laughs>